Hey, Dr. Mike here. Do you train your muscles? What about training your immune system? Stay tuned to learn how with our guest, Dr. Sonia Nodlin. You're listening to Live Foreverish, a show dedicated to helping you live just a little longer. Here's your host, Dr. Mike and Dr. Crystal Gosser. All right, welcome to Live Foreverish. Uh, Dr. Crystal, we got a special guest today. There she is right there in the middle, <laughs> Dr. Sanja Nodlin. She is a um, she has a doc- doctorate and uh, postdoctoral research at the University of Minnesota. She's focused on basic human immunology and cancer biology for many years. She currently works with Carrie and a well immune ingredient for the past 12 years and is currently R&D Senior Manager for Immune and Joint Health Category. Dr. Sonia, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Nice to be here. I'm really interested in this topic, right? I think um, when you talk about training your immune system, right, something like that, uh, uh, I, I think a lot of people like, what, what does that mean? Like, what, what exactly is that? So why don't we start there? Give us a like a quick introduction, I think, first to, to, to the new, two big parts of the immune system, innate and, and the adaptive, and then what you what do you mean by training the immune system? Yeah, sure, happy to do that. So the immune system is generally divided into two parts, the innate and the adaptive, as you mentioned. And the adaptive immune system is um, maybe the more famous part of the immune system. That is the part that can um, recognize specifically a challenge. Um, Your B cells are the ones that will mount a response that recognizes specifically like the flu or strep throat and the specific strain of those um, bacteria or viruses. It is a slower response to develop. It does take a couple of days, especially the first time that you're exposed to a certain pathogen or a, a challenge. The innate immune system is the more ancient part of the immune system evolutionarily. It's also the first responder, and it is important to maintain your immune system, your innate immune system in order to have um, an effective immune response. So innate immune training is a really new idea um, in the field of immunology. And it speaks to this idea that um, although previously and, and honestly for decades, the idea was that the innate immune system had no um, ability to mem- to remember anything or to change its response after it had encountered a challenge. Um, it was sort of thought to be the, the, the dumb arm of the immune system. It just said, challenge, fix it, gone, go back to baseline. But what we've realized in recent years in the field of immunology is that that's not true at all. The innate immune system can be trained. And by training, we mean that after the uh, innate immune system experiences um, a certain pathogen or maybe a molecule that looks could look like a pathogen, um, it changes its response in the future. Much like if you're doing fitness training, mm-hmm. um, you um, experience say weightlifting, a shoulder workout day after day after day, and your muscles strengthen and they become more able to um, lift that 50 pound ladder when suddenly there's something stuck in your gutter, right? And you need to get it out of your downspout. They can respond to that challenge better, faster, more efficiently. And the same is true with your innate immune system. Um, Training is something that happens after uh, experience with a certain um, various pathogens or some nutritional ingredients like Wellmune and is something that can be maintained with frequent experience with those, um, those molecules. Yeah. I like, you know, when you, when you talk about, um, like you mentioned there, you think of the innate immune system as kind of the, the first responders, Dr. Crystal and I've talked about it as kind of like that, the frontline defense. Um, but when you think about it, it using the human analogy, well, frontline, you know, soldiers, first responders, they have to be trained. So in the same way, we can we can train those we can train those first responders in in, in the in the immune system. How does so? There's a lot of different nutrients out there that I guess people might use to do to do this. But you guys at Cary focus on mostly beta glucans. Is that correct? And why is that? 
Yeah, so um, Wellmune is a yeast derived beta 1316 glucan. And these molecules have a very long history in the scientific literature of showing that they can affect the immune system um, through this training pathway. Other ingredients that are known in the market to affect immune health have different mechanisms. They work differently um, and they don't train the immune system. They might support by providing you know, essential minerals um, or vitamins that are needed for enzymes and processes in the cell. But the mechanism how a beta-glucan, a yeast beta-glucan um, works through the innate immune system is really unique and specific. And I'd also like to add that um, because it's so specific, the different beta-glucans all have their own unique um, effect on the immune system. And the structure of those beta-glucans is really important. Yeah. So let's, if, if you don't mind, can we just take a step back? Because our audience, um, some of them, they may not know what beta-glucans are. Sure. So can we, can we, can you just describe what they are and the differences between, like I've always been taught beta-glucan, it's it's a type of fiber. So, it, and there are different sources of the beta-glucans and then talk about, you know, those different sources. I understand that maybe they can have a different effect in the body and then kind of let's zero in on the yeast beta-glucans and how that is unique. Sure. So beta-glucans are polysaccharides, which means they are uh, linked sugar molecules together. They're glucose molecules that are linked together by very specific bonds. In this case, um, they're bonds called beta-1,3 and beta-1,6, which just talks about how the molecules, their, their carbon atoms are linked together. Um, Beta-glucans are found in a couple of different sources. The main common ones are in cereals like oats. Um, they're found in microorganisms like yeast, and they're also found in fungi like mushrooms. Um, each of these different organisms puts their, poly their polymers together, their links together a little bit differently. In cereal beta-glucans, those plants use a 1,4 linkage. Um, again, this is talking about how these carbon molecules are linked. And it is, it, it's physically changing the shape of the molecule based on how these linkages happen. So in yeast, um, they use a 1,3 linkage, which makes a very specific shape of the molecule. And then there's branches that come off of these long backbones. And the branches are the one six linkages. So when you hear these different numbers that sound a little like gobbledygook, we're just talking about how the chemists talk about shape of right. these molecules. And I think that's important because many cereals, you'll see it on your box, rich in mm -hmm. beta glucans. It's it's kind yeah. of a marketing thing. And so what we're talking about is something where it's shaped differently, hence it can have a different effect with the immune yeah. system. Right, and so like the cereal beta-glucans, for example, um, that you can find out of oats, those are known to have benefits on heart health. And they have benefits on heart health because of the shape of the molecule and how that specifically shaped molecule interacts in the body with certain receptors and signaling pathways. Mm -hmm. So the same way for yeasts, they have a different shape because of their linkage, which makes them interact with different receptors on cells um, it makes them interact with the immune system a specific way and then have that specific training effect on the innate immune system. Well, okay. So let's, let's talk about how they actually train the innate immune system, right? So everything, so we got a good definition of beta glucans. We know we want to train the innate immune response. I think our audience gets that. So how does, how is this different from other immune nutrients that we've heard of like vitamin D, vitamin C, you know, all those classic ones, what are they really doing? Yeah, so beta-glucans, like I said, are, are training versus providing mm, maybe substrates or cofactors for enzymes, which is more what a mineral or a vitamin might do. Um, the beta-glucans interact with receptors on the surface of cells. Uh, Dectin-1 is the name of one that interacts with yeast beta-glucan. And there's a number of signaling events, chemical events that happen inside the cell. And the end result is that the, um, there's actual structural changes 
um, to how easy it is for the cell to access the recipes that it's going to need to defend the body. And of course, these recipes are the DNA. These are the genes that are inside every immune cell. And um, DNA, there's just a ton of DNA in every cell. And in order to fit it all in there, it's wound really, 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 really tight. Um, and you can imagine something that's wound really tight takes a little bit of time to access. I like to use the analogy of a book. Um, if you've read through maybe a cookbook and you're looking for a specific recipe, um, if you've got that recipe bookmarked, you're going to turn to it very quickly when you're ready to get, you know, get it out and get dinner on the table quickly mm -hmm. because it's already been bookmarked and ready to be accessed versus having to page through a 300 page book, right? Or however big your cookbook is <laughs> to find that recipe. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so training works the same way. That signal through Dectin-1 tells the cells, hey, this is a program you're going to need. And then when it does actually come in contact with a real challenge in the future through the receptor cell, the receptors that recognize pathogens, those recipes are bookmarked. And so instead of having to, you know, page through to find the recipe to make the antimicrobial proteins, they're ready to go and they can be synthesized more quickly. And that whole defense program is ready to go more quickly and more effectively. Yeah. So it, it kind of primes them. It gets them ready to activate yeah. faster than they would without the beta glucan activation. It's kind of something yeah. like that. Priming is a great word to use. It, it really does. It helps, helps you. Um, I like to use another analogy too for this is um, if you're thinking about getting out of the, the house in the morning so that you're ready to get to work, beat the traffic, right? If your lunch isn't put together and it's kind of all over the fridge and your keys are in one place, maybe you left your work bag over there and your planner somewhere else, you're running around trying to get everything, right? If you put it all together, because <laughs> no one ever does that, right? <laughs> if you put it all together the night before, you're primed, you're ready to get out the door, you beat the traffic, you get on the road and you get to work on time. It's the same way that that immune system is working after it's been trained with, with Wellmune. Very nice. So tell us about the research landscape with, with the beta-glucans, any standout studies that you would like to share since yeah, yeah. I know that's an area of research for you. Yeah, so we have done a number of clinical studies um, specifically on Wellmune, again, because it has this very specific characterized structure. And so we're looking at only that structure to understand how specifically that molecule works. Um, we've got a number of different studies that have consistently shown that there is a reduction in the number of days that people experience upper respiratory tract infection symptoms, how severe those symptoms are, and, um, you know, loss, they've had, people have had um, fewer days of, like if they're training for a marathon, fewer days of, of illness during that training period. So less lost training days, better recovery. Um, there's also a really interesting study in kids showing that um, we had one to four-year-old kids who consumed um, an efficacious dose of Wellnium daily. And they had two thirds fewer upper respiratory tract infections mm -hmm. during that study. Wow. Um, which, right, anyone that has small kids. Um, that was a 30-day study, I believe. Mm -hmm. And um, during that study, um, not only did they have fewer upper respiratory tract infections, they had um, a, like less severe, fewer numbers of symptoms. And the parents rated those kids um, who incidentally were all in daycare centers, which we know are, you know, little Petri dishes of, of germs. Yes. Uh-huh. <laughs> right. The parents rated their health as overall better. Um, and so that was a really interesting study that I think um, really points to some of the benefits of Wellmune. It's, so it's pretty quick. You start taking, you start taking the, the beta-glucans and, and pretty quickly you're priming those frontline defenders. Yeah. You know, the studies that we've looked at, um, in a minimum, we tend to look at, especially for biomarkers, about a week, 10 days out to see where we're seeing changes. Um, your immune system works on a, a time scale that is much faster than how humans operate in the world, right? Like things happen in nanoseconds. Right. Um, so the immune system is seeing these molecules right away. It's having an effect. We tend to look for markers, um, you know, a number of days after starting to consume as well. Wow, very, uh, that's awesome. But uh, it makes me wonder what, you guys must be looking at some other what, other nutrients. What, what, what else is out there? 
that you think is promising besides beta glucans for training uh, the innate system and maybe even the adaptive? Like what else are you guys looking at? So, you know, I think one of the, the um, different ingredients that's been really coming on in recent years is probiotics, of course. Um, there's a lot of interest in the gut microbiome and how probiotics affect the gut microbiome and how that crosses over to your immune system. Um, and there, of course, are a large number of scientific publications on effects of, of probiotics on the immune system. Um, postbiotics are a new and upcoming area. These um, are a number of different types of ingredients. Um, they're often killed bacteria um, that have still bioactive um, components to them. But I will say to date, the only dietary ingredients that have been shown to train the immune system are yeast beta glucans. Okay. So wow. for right now, it's a, a really unique benefit that you can get from a yeast beta glucan ingredient as far as uh, innate immune training. Wow. Is this something that you think mo most people, you know, healthy adults, you know, maybe this is something they can do during the cold and flu season, or is this something you, you think should just be part of their daily regimen? Well, I suppose I'm a little biased, but I do think that it is. <laughs> with that said. <laughs> with that said, you know, disclaimer, right? Um, I think it is something that is definitely valuable as part of your daily regimen for the simple reason that innate immune training is reversible. So much like fitness training, if you uh, stop your weight training for a couple of weeks or yeah. your cardio training, you know what it feels like to go back to that yeah. afterwards, right? Same thing happens with innate immune training. It's reversible. So if you stop consuming the trainer, you will lose that, that priming, that training. Um, and although cold and flu season, you're maybe more likely to come in contact with colds and flus. Um, again, back to the kids, summer colds, right? There's always stuff that's circulating around. And if you really want to be prepared, um, frequent consumption year round is in my opinion, really the way to go. I think, I think you're right because, you know, you look at the different respiratory viruses that are popping up, different variants here and that, da, da, da. we don't, we don't, we're not even sure if some of those are, are seasonal, right? There, there's, uh -huh. there's dips and, you know, you know, surges kind of all throughout the year. Right. So I think daily is, is probably the best. Dr. Krista, you, didn't you want to ask about, I get, I can't remember what the situation was, but we were talking about the immune system before and, you know, supporting it, stuff like that. And you were getting questions. Was it from your family about over activating? Wasn't there something you want to? Right. Yeah. I'm, I'm just curious if you have any thoughts on uh, over activation of the immune system or those who who are prone to be hyper reactive and how that works with the beta glucans. Yeah, that's a really good question. And, and it's one that we hear a lot um, when we talk about Wellmune. So what I would say to that is that your immune system is built to be in just very delicately balanced. And I guess I, I don't mean fragile delicately. I mean that it really has a line of balance and your body's really good at keeping yourself in balance. Now, of course, there are immune mediated diseases that you know kind of show that you're, you can get out of balance sometimes. But what we've seen in all of the science that's been done um, with Wellmune, yeast beta-glucans, but specifically, especially when we look at biomarker work with Wellmune, is that it's working with the immune system. It's not pushing it out of balance. Um, it's helping to um, prime the immune system within that sort of homeostatic or, or range of balance. And so it is safe for everyday consumption. Um, and we haven't seen that there is a concern about overactivation with, with frequent consumption of well. And would you say that there are any complementary nutrients that would pair well with beta glucans? Um, you know, I think in general, what I like to do for a healthy immune system besides something like a yeast beta glucan is just really try to maintain a healthy diet. So fiber, those are important uh, nutrients. And I think in general, Americans aren't getting enough fiber. <laughs> um, so personally, I'm always trying to improve my fiber intake, make sure that I'm eating, um, you know, heavy on fruits and vegetables, which are providing um, lots of polyphenols and other um, micronutrients that are important just in general for your body and to help mm -hmm. maintain that balance. Mm -hmm. 
Very nice. Yeah, Dr. Crystal perked up when she heard fiber. I know. <laughs> That's her thing. She's always lecturing me. I'm not doing enough fiber. Not enough fiber. I talk about mm-hmm. it all the time. That's yeah. great. So, really you know, important. just kind of wrapping things up, you know, what would you like the audience to know? Like, what's the what's the elevator pitch? What's the take home message that you'd like to conclude with? I think it's really important to understand when you're looking at yeast beta glucan ingredients that they're all not equal. They need to have their own specific set of research so that you know that the ingredient that you're consuming is actually going to work. Um, Wellmune, of course, is is really one of the top that's there because of the deep portfolio of research. We've studied over 2,300 adults and kids. Wow. Um, and we've shown time and again that there is a health benefit for Wellmune in supporting the immune system. And all of this new research that's coming out about innate immune training um, really helps us understand what that benefit is and how it is beneficial to supporting wellness and, and living a healthy life. How can our audience, if they want to learn more about Wellmune, is there a website you'd like to give them? Yeah, there's uh, Wellmune.com, which has some great infographics on it and some little videos about more about how Wellmune works. There's a great video on the mechanism of action, and that's a good place to start uh, looking for information about Wellmune. Well, thank you so much for joining us. This is very informative, and I think it's going to, a lot of our audience um, listeners will, will, I think, really take this to heart. So thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, don't forget, you can go to um, liftforeverish.com. I almost forgot our website, Dr. Crystal. You can go to liftforeverish.com where we have over 400 uh, podcasts that you can download, like, and share, comment. We'd love to hear from you. And of course, subscribe so you never miss a show. That's liveforeverish.com. I'm Dr. Mike, and that's Dr. Crystal. <laughs> Even though you're off, I think that there she is. I'm here. <laughs> She's still there. Uh, thanks for listening. Take care.